Hey everyone, it's Mark. This is my recap for Pokemon Horizons episode 27 with my friends. This was the 1259th episode of the Pokemon anime and I'm coming in hot with this review. There have been a couple of discussion points surrounding this episode that are just flat out confusing to me. Let's get into it. All right, so we know the Rising Volt Tacklers are traveling around Galar looking for Rayquaza, but right now Liko and Roy are trying to get in some battle practice with Dot. She harshly rejects their offer, claiming to be too busy. Liko vents about this to Molly, and her advice is to say this to Dot directly. And since I am morally and legally obligated to point out any and all cute Hatena moments, I loved when Molly was like, hey, let me examine Hatena, only for her to freak out and hide in Liko's hood. Getting back on track now, Molly gives the absolutely fantastic advice that if you overthink things, you may end up just doing nothing. And okay, I feel personally attacked, Molly. This is me to a T. If any of you want to know a little bit more about what Elite Trainer Mark is like as a person, I am someone who overthinks everything down to the smallest detail, and this can often lead to me not doing anything at all, so I better take Molly's advice here. Freed calls everyone to say that they're approaching their destination, and Molly tells Liko to go out and have fun while she watches the ship with Diana and Ludlow. Our heroes march on into the wild area, and okay, here's the moment I pointed out a few weeks ago during the special preview for this chapter. I don't really have much to show you with this screenshot since I can't can't tell what Pokemon the silhouette belongs to, but it might be Roy's next capture. I thought this secret Pokemon could be important, and yeah, okay, I was completely wrong. It was just an Onyx that ended up being completely irrelevant, other than being a reference to the powerful Onyx at the beginning of the wild area on a new Sword and Shield playthrough. The only thing that comes out of this is another small Terrapagos moment. Liko has to stop her little turtle friend from chasing after the wild Onyx, showing that Terrapagos still has a lot to learn. It's very naive, but in an endearing way, at least in my opinion. Liko and Roy are blown away when Dot joins them, rare sighting of her outside of her room, and the reason she's touching grass today is because she's planned to meet up with some guy who had information about the Black Rayquaza. Well, no one shows up, and Dot is frustrated that she got wrong information again. Freed reassures her and says that setbacks happen, and quickly changes the topic as everyone agrees to enjoy their day out in the wild area by having some curry. Dot is not in favor of this idea, she's just mad at herself for getting tricked again, so mad that Hatena senses her strong emotions and freaks out, running away while Dot realizes that she was the one who scared Hatena. My favorite hat-shaped pink blob runs all the way to the edge of a pond, and after getting scared about being alone, Hatena is relieved to see her friends catch up to her. And this may sound silly, but I am being genuine when I say that I love how on the same show where we can get an absolutely stunning opening, we can also get scenes like this where everyone looks like they were drawn by a fifth grader. That's not important though, because everyone is shocked to see a Dreadnought pop out from the water, and of course, Terrapagos has no qualms about approaching this intimidating looking Pokemon. The others freak out and try to protect Terrapagos, but it turns out the wild Pokemon meant no harm. Don't judge a book by its cover, I guess. Maybe our heroes are so on edge after getting attacked all the time that they just assume everything is a threat to them, but thankfully, the Dreadnought is just happy to play around. Suddenly, this guy shows up out of nowhere, and alright, here we go. I have a lot to say about this. This person is just an ingredient seller, you know, like the generic trainer class from Sword and Shield, yeah, literally just a no-name NPC. When I watched this scene in the episode, I thought literally nothing of it. So then imagine my shock when I read the Bulbapedia article for this episode and someone tried to claim that this was the same character from Pokemon Journeys episode 101. Yeah, what a silly thing to suggest, right? And this actually got removed from the Bulbapedia page because most people were quick to agree with me that this person was just a generic NPC and no one important. Then I go online to see the reaction to this episode and multiple people have been clickbaiting videos about how this ingredient merchant confirms that Ash is returning or that Horizons exists in the same universe as Ash. Now, okay, I know not everyone who's using this as clickbait actually believes that. They're just playing the game of being a YouTuber. I get it. The current state of YouTube is such that we're basically forced into making sensationalized clickbaity titles in order to get views. I know I am very guilty of doing exactly that, but I mean, come on, are we really that desperate that we're clutching at the thinnest of straws and saying that this generic NPC confirms anything related to Ash. I just thought this was silly and I had to mention it. Like I said, I can't fault anyone for trying to shoehorn Ash into their title and thumbnail for this review. In fact, I did the same thing in a way, even though I am pushing back against this entire notion. A similar thing happened with episode 13 of Horizons. The clickbaity titles after that one were calling it the worst episode of Horizons and sensationalizing how bad of an episode it was, but I feel like that kind of clickbait just doesn't help anything or anyone. I mean, if people go on YouTube and see a ton of videos saying an episode was terrible, it's going to make them lose interest in Horizons overall, but we live in a world where YouTubers feel like they have to include the sensationalism in order to get their content picked up by the algorithm. It's a sad state of affairs, and I can't fault anyone personally for the way they create their titles and thumbnails. It's just frustrating for me to see sometimes. Okay, rant over, let's change gears and talk about the explorers. 
Gross. Sango is being Sango, and by that I mean annoying, so a gate has her Metacham throw Glalie into Garganical, causing a crash landing. The admins all start bickering as Spinel joins the party, and a gate asks him about his disinformation campaign, and it turns out that Spinel is the one behind the bad information that Dot is running into. He tried similar tricks back when he sent all of the Rising Bull Techlers to Artisan to try and find a hypnotized Liko, and now he's at it again, and honestly, I'd imagine he's the one responsible for all of these Rayquaza sightings Dot found in the last episode, they're all probably fakes planted online by Spinel. This scene ends with Amethio and Hamber making their entrance, but we'll catch up with the explorers again later. For now, it's time to make some curry. Dot reveals she's never had curry before, same here honestly, and this causes everyone to freak out. This is a really weird character trait that I never expected, but Liko and Roy both love curry. Like, love, love curry. I mean, Liko even says that curry is the next best thing in the world after Pokemon. Wow, she is not kidding around. Liko is so passionate about this, she can't wait to make some curry for Dot, and really everyone is crazy excited about this and at first it looks like Dot is going to ignore all of them, but she's actually going to go back and tell the others at the airship so that they can join them for the meal. Our heroes split up to gather some berries to use as ingredients, Roy's going for some spicy cherry berries, and a helpful Greedon comes by to collect the berries from Point Coco. This gullible little fire croc ends up giving Greedon to all the berries, and yeah, this thing isn't planning on sharing, is it? It tries giving Roy the puppy dog eyes after he confronts it, and I was impressed with Roy seeing right through this trick, threatening Greedon, only to be met with the Squabbit Squad, oh no. Fuecoco is quickly overwhelmed, and we see Liko and Dot doing their own berry surge when they hear all of the commotion, so Quaxley ends up saving the day with its water gun. With that out of the way, it's time to make some curry, and everyone is fired up about this. Well, almost everyone, I should say. And longtime viewers will know I live for this stuff. Let's go over the top and talk about the five important steps in cooking curry. One, the ingredients. Okay, write this down. Next, it's the berries. And Liko is using Pecha berries for her dish. Third is the heating, which Fuecoco is happy to supply. Fourth is the stirring which Dot reluctantly got roped into doing. The fifth and final step is your heart, and we are not messing around here. You better put your heart into curry making, or else. You hear that? Or else. Dot gives it her best effort to put up the heart hands, and this really reminded me of Marnie trying to smile. Another character trait of mine is that I'm not always the best at emoting, and I mean that by the dictionary definition, I'm not always great at displaying emotion, so I can empathize with Marnie and Dot's struggles. Enough about that though, the whole crew is here and ready to tuck into some curry. Roy's dish is extra spicy thanks to the cherry berries, but overall it looks like both Liko and Roy knocked it out of the park with their curry. Dot even admits that eating with friends is a fun time, and she further admits that maybe she doesn't know as many things as she thought. Liko was quick to encourage her friends, saying that they'll discover many more things together. Yosu, let's jump cut to a neato thing video, and this turns out to be the same video that Dot was trying to film in the last episode when Serapagos interrupted them. They talk about multi-battles and how it's important to battle together with your friends, and we zoom out from this video to see that, oh my gosh, it's Zerk watching this one. That's right, after months of speculation about whether or not Zerk was a Nito thing fan, we have confirmation of his Nito fandom, and there's nothing wrong with this, Zerk, no need to be ashamed. These two are standing outside of a room at the Explorer's base, and inside, all of the bigwigs are having a meeting. Not only do we get to learn about the Explorer's next plan here, but we also get a good insight into each of the admin's personalities. Starting with Onyx, he's in favor of a direct assault against the Rising Volteclers in order to steal Terrapagos. Sango is also in favor of this idea, while Spinel doesn't really agree, and in a shocking turn of events, Methio is on Spinel's side, which surprises everyone as Hamber asked Methio to explain why. And it looks like Methio is on exactly the same page as I am, that the Black Rayquaza is actually the one causing everything with Terrapagos and the Six Heroes. Methio thinks Rayquaza is the one awakening the Six Heroes, and I didn't really know they needed to be awoken from anything, that was news to me. But the point remains, it's Rayquaza the explorer should target, not Terrapagos. Hamber likes the way Methio is thinking, and they agree to his plan. Agate is equally impressed as she is surprised that Amethio managed to come up with this, our white and black haired villain ends the scene by claiming that he will be the first to catch Rayquaza, so it's still a little up in the air at what the next step of the explorer's plan is. Okay, back to the rising Voltaclers to finish the episode off. Liko and Dot are talking as everyone walks back to the Brave Asagi, and Liko is glad that Dot was able to turn her anger from being tricked into happiness from getting to enjoy curry with everyone. Dot explains that she just wants to be more helpful to the crew, and Liko says that Dot is already super helpful with all the information gathering, the help in the airship, her Nido thing work, and more. Dot reflects on her day, and she's happy that she got the chance to hang out with Liko and everyone else. Now it's time to sit around the meeting table and figure out what to do next. Roy suggests asking people about the ancient Pokeballs, and Diana suggests going to this antique shop she knows about. With Cap's approval, the Rising Voltecler's next step is decided, and we're off to the antique shop, wherever that is.
Well, 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 I've already had a lot to say about this episode, even though it was fairly uneventful. I can't blame anyone for thinking this was a bit of a snoozer, but even so, I thought there were plenty of positives in this episode. Aside from the very minor plot developments involving both the rising full tagglers and the explorers deciding what each of their next moves will be, nothing of note happened in this episode, and you'd be well within your right to say that it was entirely forgettable in your opinion or even filler. For me, I can't help but enjoy the character moments we got from the Rising Volt Tacklers throughout this episode. I never really felt bored by what I was watching because of the way these characters interact with one another. From the over-the-top reactions, to the silly facial expressions, and the odd fascination with Curry, I had a smile on my face for most of this episode. Because of that, I'm giving this episode a 5.5 out of 10 rating. Sure, not exactly a glowing review, but I think I've done a good job explaining myself. There was nothing bad about this episode or anything that really makes me want to rate it lower than a 5. So add on all of these fun moments that made me enjoy the episode, and that leads to my rating being just above 5. Simple. I wanted to give a special shout out to Quaxley, who was my MVP for this episode. I even had to change my Twitter header to Quaxley doing the heart hands, it was absolutely adorable. I also love seeing the way the Paldean starters were so excited to see each other at the beginning of the episode. I love the childish excitement they all got from seeing their friends. And not to go into another rant like I did earlier, but bringing up Sprigatito reminds me of some more Bulbapedia speculation that caught my eye. I think they've already removed this from the Bulbapedia article about this episode, but at one point someone was claiming that this episode confirmed Sprigatito's gender, which confused me to no end. Unless I missed something, this episode did not even hint at Sprigatito's gender in any way. However, released alongside this episode was an interview with Liko's Japanese voice actor, and I guess this is where we got some alleged confirmation that Sprigatito was female, but in reality it was just this VA saying that Spiritito is kind of like an older sister to Liko. I mean, that confirms absolutely nothing in my book, and hopefully you can see why I was so baffled when I read that this episode confirms Spiritito's gender. That just made no sense when I first read it. I wasn't lying at the start of this video when I said I was coming in hot. I want to fight back against the misinformation being spread, and who knows, maybe Spinel is behind all of this nonsense too. Oh yeah, and my last note about this episode is how it's kind of funny that the explorers decided to go after Rayquaza instead of the Rising Volt Tacklers, but little did they know that the Rising Volt Tacklers are also going after Rayquaza right now, so inevitably these two groups will cross paths again soon, but it'll be by complete coincidence, which made me laugh. On to the preview for the next episode, and it was a pretty straightforward one. This antique shop owner that Diana recommended is going to be the focus, and in the preview we got to see Hatena's perspective, she was easily able to identify that the shop owner had some bad intentions. Other than that, I have no idea what's going to happen in the next episode, but I am excited to watch it nonetheless. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my review for the next episode, and go ahead and like this video if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching, and feel free to leave your take down in the comments. I'd be happy to talk with you about this episode, or anything, honestly. I'm pretty much an open book, and we'll discuss just about anything. I'll see you guys next time.